how's it going? It's been a while. Yeah, not too, not too bad. It's going pretty well. Is it going all right for you? It's going good. Can't complain. Just uh, had a PALS event in Southern Ohio. What's uh, PALS? Hocking Hills. And then uh, we spent a few more days down there and uh, we spent a day, we, we spent our time in a few days in a cabin for PALS with some other pastors, uh, first, second, third year guys and their wives. And then uh, my wife and I spent a few more days in another cabin. You know, over the river and through the woods type of thing. And it was good. That's awesome. It. Yeah. Yeah. Post seminary it's, applied learning and support group, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's I a program they started, that. right? Right. Right. As I was finishing seminary, I think they started that. And so, yeah, it's a good, good thing for guys coming yeah. out of seminary to, to get together and talk about the uh, joys and struggles of the new ministry uh, vocation they're in. Yeah. So, Good, good. I'm glad you have that. Yeah, I just got back from vacation last week myself, and um, it's been a while since we've done one of these because of our schedules conflicting, and we decided not to stress, and so but we're back at it, and um, talking today about, um, what's our question? I wrote it down here. Where's my, I got so many things on my desk. What does the Bible say about rejecting the gospel? Yes. So we're going to, we're going to tackle think, that. I think, yeah, I think, and I think our purple from this even though you and I weren't there in one of our congregations this past Sunday, uh, this was the text that was uh, that read and some preached on uh, the parable of the sower. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's start with uh, the words of Jesus in uh, this parable. It's a familiar parable and uh, um, it seems pretty straightforward, but we're going to talk about the um, the concept of uh, basically what. Well, I don't want to give it all away, but but what happens when the seed doesn't fall on on ripe soil? So uh, you want to read it for us? Sure. Yeah, I'll be uh, reading from the New King James translation, uh, verses one through nine on chapter 13. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea and great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. All right. Yeah, so this Jesus parable, and yesterday at the gospel lesson also included uh, Jesus' ex explanation of it. Um, he talks about how each soil um, type or each seed landing location is comparable to a, a different, um, I, I think sometimes we think about situations in life, but I think it's a different kind of hearer would be a good way to um, talk about it, how how those are. I, I, I've, uh, I think I've even preached it myself before, you know, where we're different types of soils at different times in our lives. So we want to um, strive to be the good soil. Um, but we might have times where we got thorny soil. And and I, I think um, just to repent of my previous uh, applications of it, I don't think that's the point Jesus is making here. I think the question that you, you suggested, the question, I think this is a good question to guide us towards what I think Jesus wants us to know about um, this parable. What he wants us to know about the truths of his kingdom is that uh, he's He's giving it and uh, we, we don't want to reject it. But, and, and, uh, yeah, and a couple, just a couple of things. I think we, we do need to kind of talk about a little bit. He, you know, he spoke to them in parables. He dresses, you know, his disciples want to know, why are you free? You know, why are you speaking in parables? You know, right. a lot of people talk about, you know, it's a heavenly, uh, it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, you know, and all those things. But when you look at the parable in the Greek, uh, para means itself. You take that first part, it means to lay alongside of something else. Mm -hmm. And so it's a comparison. So Jesus, I think, is, I believe, my opinion is he's taking something, something that they would do in an agrarian society that was, you know, at this time, everybody understood agriculture. 
Yeah. And so he puts something. He lays now the kingdom of heaven alongside an agri you know, agricultural concept or understanding of something. Sowing. And, yeah. and, and some of the things I want to address is getting into this. And there's some different opinions on this, but I kind of, this is my opinion on with Jesus sowing the seed. Just at that time, farmers then just didn't, didn't, didn't throw seed all over the place. I know yeah. Bailey, Kenneth Bailey will take that concept and say, well, the sower here, Jesus saying he's throwing just seed everywhere. Well, that wasn't the case. That's not how they they farmed then. They they actually make a trench in the ground. Some was rocky ground, some other types of different ground, but there was also paths along the way which they would walk. It was yeah. beaten paths, and they would sow, they would cast that seed into these different areas within uh where they were sowing the seed. So I I think to start right off, I don't think there's a unintentional sowing here. I think Jesus, you know, the sower here is sowing his seed with the ground that he's put together. He's walking on those beaten paths. He takes a handful of seed. Some of that seed falls out of his hands, falls on the beaten path. Some other seed, you know, he might have a section of his field that might be rocky, you know, and such. Um, so he's using real agricultural setting to describe what's happening here with his seed. So he gets the, you know, the people who are listening to him, he, he's getting their attention. Yeah. With, yep. yeah. With something with that, something they, can that they can understand. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and so I think that's what he's, what I believe that's what he's doing here with this. And, and so as he goes right along, he sets the stage by talking about the beaten path. Well, this is the beaten path where you'd walk. I know. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to hold beans, you know, mm -hmm. and you walked in the path between the beans. You know, you had your hoe and you didn't walk on the beans, you walk in the path. Well, that would get, you know, tamped down as you walked on it. It wasn't worked up. And you would hold the, the weeds out in between those bean plants. So I understand what G, what, what the sower, what Jesus is talking about with the sower. Is it, but some of those seeds fell on that beaten path. And he talks about, you know, how uh, that that the birds come along and they take it away. Well, why is it? Because it doesn't get put into the soil. Right. You know, and with that too, then you have the next one talk, some fell on stony places. Well, again, he's casting, I, I can remember, did, even my garden, my backyard, you get to the front part of my garden, it's very rocky. If you go to the back part of my garden, it has no rocks at all. <laughs> so I can, under, I can relate to this story real well. But, you know, you got some parts of my garden, it's really good. Other parts is rocky. Well, he, G, you know, Jesus talked about this sower has some of these seeds fell on rocky ground. And what's the problem? Because it's so rocky, it doesn't have a chance. It springs up real nice. The heat hits the soil. What little soil is on the surface? It warms up very quickly, so it sprouts very quickly. But it has no ability to take a deep root because of the rock. Yeah. And then you move on to the next one. And I know this is looking at my strawberry patch in my garden. It is inundated now with vines and weeds. You know, and it's choking out my strawberries. And I, there's another thing that can happen too when you try to pull those weeds up. I'm going to save that for my sermon illustration this coming Sunday with the, the parable of the tares and the wheat. But I understand weeds too. It can choke the, it can choke the fruit out of a plant because you're competing for the same ground. You're competing for the same moisture and the nutrients in the ground. But then he has this one here at the very end where you, where you have good ground, you have a good crop. And again, again too, growing up in a, on a farm and on a produce farm and also having a garden, I can relate to this too, is you always knew that good sections of your garden or the field that would always produce the best fruit or the right. best crop. And, and so going through this when jesus mentioned this i you know i had to get their attention they can relate to this but it does they don't make the connection quite yet because they got to ask jesus hey what are you talking about here now right right and that's and we're we're asking that question now too <laughs> so <laughs> exactly unfortunately, unfortunately, I, had, I wanted to lay that out because it, it it speaks to me today now some people who maybe live in a in a, in a uh, city you know type situation metropolitan might not be able to relate to this. You got to explain it a little bit. 
Uh, but someone who grows up in, in, a, in a farming community or has a there's a gardener and such would understand what's happening here, right? As well. Yep. Yeah. So this and this uh, and then like like we said, it kind of it explains that dichotomy and the the rejecting side presents itself with all the different w ways or reasons that happens. Um, different motivations, different life cares, concerns, situations that keep people yes. from uh, accepting the gospel. And so ultimately, for me, this this parable is is not so much, I, I, I do think it's an important conversation we're going to have about it. You know, what, what does the Bible say about rejecting the gospel? But I think the key that's at the heart of this gospel uh, parable is, is that the sower is just so lavishly and so generously, uh, generously, and, and um, you, you might even say wastefully giving that those that seed out there like there's and and i think that's the beauty of the gospel that we find in this parable that we find in all of scripture is that god's word god's work of his holy spirit continually goes out for everybody he's not looking for a good condition of the soil he's not looking for uh, the right time the right season he seems like a terrible farmer because he's just wasting all of this seed you, you might even say he's he sows in the middle of winter or sows in the middle of fall or sows when the harvest is ready when it's which which is kind of the picture that i see with uh different types of soil it's just that that careless reckless love of god that that just goes forth and and gives that that goodness to people um, regardless of their situation. And then the reality that we're going to talk about today is that some some just don't receive it. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want me to go ahead and read? Uh, or you want to go ahead and read verses 18 to uh, 23? Yeah, to kind of yeah Jesus' explanation of it is, is even better yeah. than ours. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you want me to go ahead and read that? Yeah, do it. All right. Verse 18. Uh, Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the ground, good ground, is he who hears the word and understands it, and indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 as we were kind of talking before this, this is uh, this parable shows up in the midst of kind of a a multi chapter sweep that uh that Matthew's gospel presents to us about the receiving of the kingdom. You pointed out um, in chapter eleven that John the Baptist is questioning whether Jesus is the one or or should we expect another and um, and, and to put that in the context of the parable, is this seed worth holding on to, or, or should we look for a different seed to take root in our life? Uh, the end of um, chapter 12, uh, well, towards the end of chapter 12, in verse 32, um, uh, verse 31 and 32 says, uh, Therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks a word against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or the age to come. And so, again, this is uh, a picture of the receptivity of, of the hearer. Are you willing to, to open your eyes, to stop closing your eyes to the gospel, open your ears, stop closing your ears to the gospel that, that wants to work on you? And, and so, um, and that statement is, is a powerful one that I, I want to spend some time in this conversation unpacking because um, he, Jesus is kind of speaking hyperbolically. It's, it, he says, whoever every sin in blasphemy will be forgiven. And that's a kind of a bold statement. And, and it's not a completely true statement because he goes on to the next statement and, and immediately undoes it. But he says, because he says, whatever, uh, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. So if every sin is going to be forgiven, except this one, that's kind of what he's saying here. Everything, God is willing to forgive everything, but don't blaspheme or speak against the Holy Spirit. And and I think that's a way to describe uh, the re rejecting the gospel is to speak against the Holy Spirit. And, 
and to to not receive what God is is giving as as this parable unfolds. So so I think um, just to kind of pull it back to where we started here, this is a, something we see moving throughout and and even in the chapters ahead. And this might become somewhat of a mini series um, just to talk about what the kingdom of God is and how how God desires people to have it. Yet uh, today we're we're talking about how it's it's rejected. Some people just don't want it, don't receive it. Yeah, and just going on too in the beginning of uh to kind of set the stage for a conversation talking about rejecting you know re rejecting the work of the holy spirit but then jesus talks about in the very next verse in verse 33 chapter 12 verse 33 either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad for a tree is known by its fruit you know he's he, in a sense he's 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 prepping to understand who is it's going to be a part of this kingdom? You know, that yeah. you had John the, Baptist, John the Baptist question whether or not, hey, is this the kingdom or not? Doesn't feel like it. I'm sitting in this cold, dark prison. Right. You know, Jesus gets blasted by the religious authorities for picking grain, you know, in a field on the Sabbath day. And he tells yeah. them, hey, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. I'm going to show you. I'm going to heal somebody. They reject that because they want to set up a plot now to try to destroy him. Right. And yeah. you talk about what you just talked about. They, he warns them, don't don't refuse the work of the Holy Spirit, who's working through my word and my acts, to tell you, hey, the reign and rule of the kingdom of God is now at hand. Right. And we'll know that whether or not you believe it or not by the fruit that you bear. Yeah. And now we get into this parable of the sower, where, you know, we have three of them that they sprout up and only get to the point where they can bear fruit. Yeah. And he gives the reason why. Yes. Yeah. And that's, um, that's, that's, that's what, uh, we, we desire God's work for people. And, and I think that's, uh, we've kind of been tiptoeing around a number of things, but just to reiterate one of the foundational aspects is God doesn't desire people to reject him. <laughs> God, no. God makes his gifts available for everyone. Yeah. But there is, uh, from Scripture, clear uh, evidence, clear truth that we 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 rejecting the gospel is bad. <laughs> and maybe it seems yeah. so obvious to say, but I, but I think that's and, and we're probably preaching to the choir with this uh, episode here. But it's it's something for us to be aware of and to pray about. But um, I, I was looking also outside of Matthew to see. Um, see what scripture says about this in uh, my chain reference Bible was helpful because I didn't have a lot of time today, but uh, Psalm 36 verse 12 says, see how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. Uh, Proverbs 6 verse 15, um, th therefore disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Um, the uh, the uh, parable of the or the story of the rich man and Lazarus has a great teaching on this as well, where where the the rich man um, had no time for God's word during his life, and and he he wanted to go back from the dead and and tell his brothers about this, and and uh, the uh, Abraham, right? It was Abraham in that story that said, well, they got Moses and the prophets, let them hear them, and uh, but in verse twenty six of Luke sixteen it says. Besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross from there to us. And, and so this this rejection of the gospel, and, and I, I want to get to that point, um, to make that point clear, that rejecting the gospel is something that Scripture is very clear about, that we we there's there's no hope for someone who rejects the gospel, uh, according to right. Scripture. And and that's, that's a hard thing to say. It, and I'm saying it with a smile on my face, but it's the the reality of the the power of the gospel is such that we need it more than anything else in this world. And so rejecting it should be avoided at all costs, should be, um, it, you know, it, it should drive us. It, it should drive us to sadness for those who reject it and cause us to want to to do whatever we can to bring them to it. So but but I, I don't know, I feel like there's there's some something to be said about what can we do to keep people from rejecting the gospel or well it uh you got me thinking about something what you just said there and two things came to mind one there's serious consequences i think you said that well there's serious consequences to rejecting the gospel 
And I think we have to make sure we get that point across. Yeah. This is this is not uh, you know, I'll do it tomorrow type of situation. Because you never know. You could be like the 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 foolish rich man uh, who thought he had everything and his soul was required of him that evening. Right. I mean, the, the there's no better time than now. And I think that's the point. And two, the sower here or God doesn't get the blame. Right. For the rejection of the gospel. That's yeah, he, man's that's man's fault. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think this is where one of the um one of the big challenges of uh, our Christian faith, one of the big challenges of the truth is that um, God is good. Um, God is all powerful. Um, and yet there's evil in the world. Those, those three things are all true. God is powerful, uh, all powerful. God is good. And there's evil in the world. So if he's good and all powerful, why doesn't he just bring evil to an end or, or stop evil? And this uh, historically is called the crux theologicum, the theologian's cross. This is a difficult thing for us to wrap our heads around, and and, and we're never going to fully be able to wrap our heads around it because it's beyond us to know the mind of God and to know yeah. why He allows people to reject Him. But but the 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 reality is is that God is not um, to pick up what you were saying. God is not. Um, what were you saying? No, you, you said that uh, it's it's up to humans to reject it. It's it's not God's fault for for a rejection of the gospel. But at the same time, it's not a human's credit. It's not that believers, you know, look what I did when they accept the gospel or or when they receive the gospel. It's all God's work on the positive, and it's all man's fault on the negative. Right. I always always make this comment at Concordia quite a bit. If you go to heaven, who gets all the credit? Well, God. To yeah. go to hell, who gets all the blame? Well, you. Right. And people understand that. You can ask that question to anybody. 99.9% .9 of the time, they'll get that those two questions right. They'll answer those two questions right. Yeah. But you talk like with the evil and, and, you know, why does God allow this rejection and the take, taking place? But we also have to, and, and you're right, ultimately, we don't know minds, God's mindset on this and why he continues to allow this. Mm -hmm. but we do know the why behind in a sense of why there is because this is what man wanted in the garden yeah this is what he desired this is the now the fruit using ag agricultural terms this is the fruit of adam and eve's decision their ch choice to reject what god had to give them and now to truly experience evil good and evil right you know they, they had it where they only experienced good now Satan laid before them, you can also good and evil. You can also experience evil. Well, now, now mankind ever since has been experiencing evil. But, you know, and you also look at too is, is why would God allow this? If there is no evil in the world now, as we wait for our Lord's return, how would we, how would we be able to exercise what is good? We have something now, evil is the backdrop to which now we can exercise what is just right and holy mm. to bear fruit onto god yeah and that's in that way too now granted that doesn't answer the big question but it gives us some framework how do we you know moving forward yeah uh, well and, and i and i think one of the best things to that we can say about this um this question is what does the bible say about rejecting the gospel is it doesn't diminish the gospel's power it doesn't diminish right. the the necessity of the gospel. It shouldn't stop us from proclaiming the gospel. And I think that's um, one of the fears that the devil would love to sneak in the back door of this conversation is just like, well, it's all up to God. So why are you going to bother anyways? And and no, he's he's called us to be proclaimers. I mean, we have the vocation of proclaimers, but we all have the the vocation as baptized children of God to have this hope and to be prepared to make a defense or or to <laughs> give an explanation for for why we can be joyful in the midst of an evil world um, because we know there's something beyond this world. And, and that's, right. that's yeah. something we, we need to bear in mind. Oh, do you want to get, uh, start walking through this, uh, the interpretation through each of these and the why behind some of these? Yeah, sure. There's we can definitely do that. There. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, before we get off, we don't, we don't do it. Cause I know that's what our intentions were. Right. Yeah. So that's, um, so the first one um, in verse 19, when anyone yeah. hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in the heart. 
this is what's been sown along the path. And so to talk about that, uh, so the path is um, so people are just traveling through life. So if I can expound homiletically on this, people are going through life so fast, they're not going to take time to, to think about what does this mean for me? Um, so Jesus died for you. Okay, I've heard that before. What difference does that make? That's that's that mindset of never stopping to say, well, what happens when I die? What's my hope? What's my future? What's the meaning of life? And and I think there's so much of that. That's probably um, I, I, each of these. And it, believe it or not, Jesus does a great job of laying out the human condition, condition of the human hearts with this parable and the examples here. But but yeah, that um, that I think that that key word, not understanding it. Uh, can be yeah. abused um, because our, our salvation does not depend on our understanding. And, and you might read that verse and you think, well, I have to understand everything about God in order to be saved. And, and that's not what's being said here. I, I think it's kind of what I was saying, you're applying it or understanding it as necessary for your life. Is, is that kind of how you would take that understanding of it? Uh, I, I think it's, it's, uh, I'm going to run along the lines of, of, as we move along, you know, we plant the seed of faith in, in, in baptism. Mm -hmm. You know, we bat, we bring children to the waters of holy baptism. They receive Christ's righteousness, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The seed of faith is planted. And, and, and then that, that little seed now sprouts. But if we don't water that with the word of God, what happens? Right. If, if we, and I think that's where it comes, it's my understanding of the word understand here is, is that, now this tender little plant that's you know been nurtured and brought about by the word of God, the gospel, baptism, it had the, I mean it, it has to be cared for and and watered and nurtured. Yeah. In that understanding of what the faith is. And, and that's where, you know, we, we're all we're all given perfect faith in the heart, but we spend our whole lives catching our head up with what we already know in our heart. Hmm. And that is a lifetime journey. You'll never get to the full understanding with head knowledge. Right. But it's also the flip side of that is it doesn't give you a green light not to have any head knowledge concerning right. your faith. You know, when you're sitting there on a Sunday morning, do you understand what you're saying with the apostles of Nicene Creed? Or do you understand what you're praying for when you're praying the Lord's Prayer? Yeah. Or are you just going through the motions and looking at your clock and waiting to get out of there? Well, and that's why the, the catechism is so useful for this uh, understanding, because, I mean, you could say the same thing about the Ten Commandments. Do you just read them and say, well, I've never killed anybody. I, I've never right. stolen. I've never committed adultery. I'm a good person. Or do you really understand what is being demanded of you, required of you by God? And, and uh, to be right. convicted of your sin is is the work there. So, so yeah, that, that that's there. And, and I I, I think I'll just uh, contradict you a little bit because this isn't even seedlings. This is literally seed that's on the path that the birds snatch up before it even has a chance to germinate. <laughs> this, well, this I would say this though, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lay a trump card down on your go on, on your left bower. I'm gonna go right bower on you here just a little bit because it says, and the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. Mm, yeah, even though this is even though this is seed along the path. Jesus applies it. This is what the seed of, you know, the, the seed of faith has been planted. Yeah. In someone's heart. And now it's been taken out and ripped out because there's no understanding and there's no uh, continued nurture of that faith. Right. And that should be a warning for all of us. Right. As a church, as pastors, as lay people, as parents, as God parents, uh, to, to you know to really double down on on the Christian education of our young people, even our adults who are baptized and brought into a faith, you know, older in life. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. And and well, and I think that's that's something that I came across in my my brief study for today is that they um uh, a lot of times we kind of understand this only as a uh picture of um an unbeliever, but this this could also this should also cause us to consider our condition in life, um, and and to say, am am I letting this seed be devoured by the world? Because that's a reality that that you you can reject the gospel after you've received the gospel, which is a frightening reality. And and whose fault would that be? It's your fault, just like we've talked about earlier. And and so we we want to make sure we're 
understanding, nurturing, letting this uh, take root and uh, bear fruit in our hearts. But it's uh, even, you know, elsewhere in scripture talks about that the, the word of God never comes back void and empty. Mm -hmm. in, in each one of these cases of these four soils, the word of God is effective. Yeah. It, it, it does what it says the word of God does. I mean, it, it will create faith and it does that in each one of these situations. But we have different, you know, three different scenarios on what happens. Now they're they're very generic, yeah. But you can kind of covers a lot of covers a lot of bases here. What we'll be talking about. So let's go on to the next one if you'd like. Um. So you have a, you know, the the word of God was just it was sold on the beat path, sold in the heart. But it before it has any type of nurturing effect, it gets Satan comes and takes it away. Yeah. But then we have in verse twenty. But he who receives seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So again, you have a situation here where the word of God takes root. It's probably been nurtured and brought up, but it has no deep root. It has no root in himself in the sense of uh, because it becomes tested. Mm hmm. When faith becomes tested with the trials and tribulations of life, Satan, the devil, demons, whatever that might be, or yourself. Um, how will your faith stand up to those trials and tribulations in life? Yeah. And, and, and it's a very broad brush what that could be. But, you know, I, I'm sitting there thinking myself many times in my own life where I had these, you know, uh, trials and tribulations come and it shook me. I think you you do too, and I think a lot of people sitting will be you know watching and listening to this can also think back in their own lives, you know, uh, where the roots of their faith were shaken, almost ripped out, right? And, and sometimes it does happen. You yeah, know, like, yeah. You know, people who could say, "Why God? Why did you allow my parent to die of cancer, or my spouse, or my child?" Yeah. Yep. Yeah, those I mean, faith-shaking moments where literally it shakes your faith and you say, look what I've done for you, God, and what are you doing for me now? I, that That's yeah. definitely, you can see how that could lead somebody to reject the gospel. Well, I've tried this, but it's not gone the way I wanted it to, so why should I keep it up? Uh, yeah, you think it, of the early Christians in the early church, you know, when persecutions were, were hot and heavy those first three centuries or so. Um, you had many Christians who, you know, you had a choice reject christ or worship the worship caesar you know some rejected christ and worship caesar as a god others didn't were fed to the lions mm -hmm. right you know, uh, that's an earth-shattering moment you know for some right yeah and that was you know led to some controversies in the early christian church when those persecutions were over how does the church receive those people back who turned their back on christ who in a sense uprooted themselves what little root they had you know yeah you know how do you receive them back so and this is an ongoing thing and i think in every time every different time and space in life uh this looks different yeah but it's always going to be with us on this side of glory yep definitely it's the reality and we yep. all know people uh, you know do you have anything else you want to say about that no, let's go on to the next one. Um, so verse 22 says, as for what was sown among the thorns, he's the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. And and I, I think this is, it's almost the converse of, of what you get on the, the first one. You get the, uh, the rocky soil that's choked out by um, the tribulations that come, but then there's also the threat of the blessings of God in this world, and and that's ultimately right. when you when you think about the the good things you get as gifts from God, it it kind of guards against this mentality that could cause you to reject it. But but you, you we you've seen it ha happen. We see it happen where people are like, well, I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. This isn't adding anything to my life. In fact, it's it's such a downer to go to church and hear I'm a sinner every week. Why would I want to keep keep that up? But but this is. Yeah, it, it, Jesus really covers, he said earlier, broad strokes in every facet, and it's just from every angle, you can see how this is going on. It, and it's uh, and it's one that we, I think, if I had to 
pick one of these three situations that I think it really applies, really helps with us today is this one right here. Right. Because it is, as the as our text tells us, the deceitfulness of riches, deceitful. It's sneaky. It, it catches up on you. Don't see it coming. Right. You know, like you said, you know, I want, you know, you, uh, I'm going to go golfing this Sunday instead. Well, then, you know what? I'm going to go join a golf league now. It's on Sunday mornings. But I'm still, a, I mean, it's those deceitful little things and pleasures of life that can be anything that can pull you away and you don't see it coming. Right. And, it, and before you know it, it chokes you right out. Yep. I mean, because remember, weeds don't come up out of nowhere all of a sudden choke the plant. It takes, you know, I've been I've been at war with my weeds and my strawberry patch all summer. And I'll rip them out and it takes a couple of weeks for them to come back. But it doesn't happen overnight. But you can see where it just slowly starts to take over and chokes them out. And I think for us today, we just don't, a lot of times we don't see it coming. Yeah. 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 We, we, we are, uh, we're, we're certainly uh, in danger of becoming these types of soils. And um, I, I think this is, uh, again, the, the purpose of Jesus ministry isn't, isn't completely for us to um, examine our life to say, Oh, I've been that soil before, or, or I could be that soil. I, I think the the beauty is to realize this last one is who you are in Christ. This is who you are in Christ. Yeah. You are a fruit bearing believer. Um, as for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word, understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, and then um, a lot, hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. So, so and, and but the the two things that are there. This is all we all we need to do is hear and understand, and and it's. Um, it's it's God's work for us to to give us these words. He's he's bringing our voices. He's bringing a voice of others into your life. He's bringing the voice of His Scripture, His the devotional life that you have. He's He's letting you hear what you need to hear, and and you you're you're understanding it. You're you're taking it to heart. You're letting it be a part of your life. That 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 to me, I feel like understanding. Uh, not to go back completely to that discussion, but that understanding word, I feel, can be a stumbling block for us. Because you, you think, well, I don't understand it well enough, or I have to understand it well enough. But right. but understanding is, I, I mean, just to say it simply, and I think I said this earlier, is just to understand that it's important for you. And so to keep asking that question, what what does this mean for my life, is is how you know this root, this word is taking root and, and bearing fruit in your life. But you said something in the beginning of our conversation that it's got me thinking, too, is what is it? How would, what can we do as a church to prevent these things from happening? Yeah. You know, and, and again, as an avid, as someone who grew up on a produce farm and then, um, you know, a, has a, a garden, I like to garden. You know, one of the best tools I have is a hoe, right? You go out there and you work the ground, you hoe those weeds. Well, the church has been given tools, so to speak. Right. Word and sacrament. You yeah. Know? Yeah receive the gifts that god wants to give you yeah. um as you lay these all these problems that we have whether being assaulted by satan uh trials and tribulations in life a lot of them caused by our own doing or the cares of this world we lay them at the foot of the cross and yeah. and, and receive what's been given to you in your baptism receive what he gives you in his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins open your you know pray that the lord would open your eyeballs and your earballs up and, and so you can hear what what's being proclaimed from the pulpit right right it, it, that, that's for you i mean yeah. this is, these are the yeah. things that god has done for you and he's currently doing for you yeah i and and, and I, I think it, it's it's exactly right it seems so simple it seems too simple but that's that's it what does. it is it's the power of the word and that's that's the seed that gets sown recklessly that gets sown so lavishly that it's it's there and and to to trust that God will work through his word as he does as he has for us as he does for us and and as he will for others we just keep putting that word out there because that is what's going to change lives right and and uh I think and I want to tie it off with this is just that all we also ask that the Lord he constantly reminds you through the use of word and sacrament of who you are and you mentioned that earlier just moments ago of who you are in Christ. Right. You know, uh, you are good soil. 
yeah in christ um despite all our thorns and thistles and rocky ground and all the other stuff that we carry with us in christ we are good soil in his eyes he has made us good soil you know we're yeah. declared to be um but you know it's it's a uh, but it's a reality check too to realize that you know because when jesus back in chapter 10 when he sends his disciples out into the world in their first missionary journey he told them you're going to be rejected and there are there is flat out rejecting the gospel we see that but what's yeah. hard for us to really grasp is that within the kingdom of god within the kingdom of heaven the church we see people who can still fall prey yeah that's hard for us to uh to grasp and understand we have to ask why lord why and and he it's he's... a tough reality he stands ready for us and ready to uh to work for us yeah. and that's that's the joy we have and uh um that joy is bigger than the the sorrows of the the realities of rejection that that surround us we we are made by him to be that good soil and and that's that's i think part something that should be said is uh and we we don't know we we can't know a person's heart so when it seems like people are rejecting us they're or rejecting the gospel um, which are two different things. We could talk about that. It would be a different conversation. Yeah. Rejecting a person, rejecting the gospel is not the same. But rejecting the gospel, it's it's we we are not the judge. God is at work in in, in all times and all places, and so we trust um, trust that His work can change paths or stony or thorny soils to the good soil that He desires, and He's done that for each of us, and um, we pray that He um, does that for those. Um, who have not yet uh, let this take root in their life. Right. No, and it's, uh, I think there's a third use of the law application here, but I think that's beyond maybe our conversation here a little bit. But, uh, but you know, and you see yourself struggle with these things, you repent to those things, but you also avoid those things. If you know you have a care of this world that's causing you to walk away from Christ yeah. or interfere with your relationship with the Lord, you cut it out like Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. Cut your eye out. Cut your hand off. You know, I use hyperbole, but to get the point across. Right. Um, th there is a warfare that kind of goes on here a little bit. Um, yeah. A militant farming, <laughs> so right. to speak, that that, uh, that we're always had to be constant, you know, constantly aware of too, as well. Yeah, militant farming. I like that. Militant <laughs> go, farming. Go, go pull yeah. those weeds. Wait a second. Next okay, week we're going to hear that we let the weeds, <laughs> Next next week we're going to hear that we let the weeds grow, right? So what, what do we say? <laughs> yeah, that that's uh, right. And it's uh, I I entitled uh, well back in chapter eleven I I I titled my sermons uh, the contradicted Christ, and now we move in from the contradicted Christ to the contradicted kingdom. Yeah, it's not what they expect, and, and you know you don't expect that people brought into the kingdom of heaven that now are going to reject it and walk away for different reasons. Right, that's something we don't understand, and, and it goes beyond why, Lord. You know? And as we get into the weeds, you know, it, it, we'll talk about next week. I want to get into a whole lot of it, but why are we told we can't rip them out? The tears yeah. and the weeds. Why can't we? We'll leave it at that. You know, that's yeah. a question. Come back. Come back next week. We might tackle that. Hey, so. back. Hey, we'll talk about the other. How does the church deal with evil? There you go. There you go. All right. Well, you guys take care. Thanks for uh, tuning in. If we uh, raised more questions and answers, uh, please forgive us or, or let us know at least what those <laughs> questions are so we can seek forgiveness or clarity. Um, but um, good to be back with you and uh, hope to yeah. get a stretch going now where you can tune in weekly. So um, anything to add? No, we're just uh, for yeah. Just to your point, forgive us because we're still switching from vacation <laughs> mode to re back to reality, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. all right, well, God be with you all. We'll see you when we see you. Yeah, it's pleasant. Take care.